Hello class, welcome to this mini-series on React hooks. The React team has recently added this feature to improve the way we write React components by giving us the ability to hook into React core functionality whenever we need them. Now, before we proceed with what React hooks are, here are a few things to keep in mind. Number one is that classes will not be removed. The developers behind React have made it clearly that they were, there is no plans to remove classes and you can still use classes. Number two is that hooks can actually work alongside with classes. So if you have any components that have classes, you can still embed components in them that use hooks or the other way around. Number three is that if you want to refactor your code and use hooks in your apps, you have to update to React 16.8 to uh, use this functionality. All right, so why should we use hooks? now? Before, it was literally impossible to manage state, local state in a component unless you make it a class component and have a state in it. Now we can actually use state and other React features without having to make um, the component into a class and keep it as a functional component. Number two is that we can share logic more easily and reuse functionality between component and even functionality that has to do with editing what in, is in the component and updating the component state and props and all of that. Number three is that it reduces the amount of code written in components, as you will see later when we start to use some hooks and some custom hooks to actually abstract away some of the functionality that would otherwise bloat the number of lines that are inside of one component. So I, I would suggest you, uh, highly recommend that you would check the React documentation to further understand what hooks are. Uh, you can go to react.js.org slash hooks. And I'll post a link in the description for this really cool talk that uh, when React announced the hooks so that you could uh, see some uh, examples. And of course, we will be writing a lot of these essential hooks ourselves. Anyway, so enough of the theory and let's get to the code. All right, so I've gone ahead and created this hooks folder in my desktop. And here I'm gonna run create react app dot, which will create the react app in this folder. So I'll be back once this is done. Okay, now that it's done installing, I'm gonna run npm start. And quickly, I'm gonna go to getbootstrap.com. I don't wanna write CSS for this project, so I wanna introduce some styling. Uh, for that, I'm gonna use bootstrap. So let's go to get started and copy this CSS. Let's go to public. Let me close this in the index HTML. Um, here, let's paste that CSS and let's go and grab the JavaScript dependencies, copy that and go at the bottom of the body and paste them here. And we can change the name of the app and call it React Hooks. Let's save this. Let's look at our app, nothing fancy, the basic uh, boilerplate. All right, let's actually clean up some of the stuff that we don't need. Let me close this uh, terminal. Uh, here I'm going to remove the app CSS, the test file, the index CSS, the logo. And here I'm going to remove the import for the CSS file. And in the app JS, I'm going to remove the logo and the app CSS. And here I'm just going to um, return a container and here we'll have a heading saying hello world let's save all files and make sure that it's running without any error it, it is and if you look it just says hello world all right so first thing we do uh, this is a class component so let's uh, fix that we no longer use class components in react hooks we just use normal functional components so we say const app app equals uh, props and here we don't have a render method because this is a functional component. We just remove that render and we, we remove this import because we don't need it anymore. And we save and it still works the same way. All right. So what I want to create for this uh, mini project is that I want to create a form where we can add people to a list of existing, um, you know, people and show them on the right side of the page. So here, uh, I'm going to start by using our first hook. So here actually we need to import it. Let's import a hook called use state. And use state lets us actually use a, a create a state inside this component. So here I'm going to say const and I'm going to use array destructuring and I'm going to say people and the second one will be set people. I'm going to say it equals use state 
And here I'm going to give it an initial value of the state and I'll explain what this does in a second. So here I'll say uh, first name will be John and last name will be Doe. All right, so let's actually add another one because why not? So first name will be Jane and last name will be Doe. All right, so what this does is that useState use state will take an initial value and then this function will return us uh, an array containing two things. Number one is the state, the current state. So in this case, it's gonna be just this. And the second thing is the function that will allow us to change the state, which we will call set people. Now you can call these whatever you want, but it's a good convention to uh, call this the type of data, the data resource you have, and this you call it set whatever type of data you have. Okay, let's add a form in our markup that will allow us to add people to this uh, people collection. All right, here I'm gonna say dot row, because uh, we're in a container, we need to add rows, because it's bootstrap, and I'm gonna say dot column. I'm not gonna give it a width, because if we just put two, it's gonna give them 50, 50% of width. Here I'm gonna add a header to, add a header to that says add a person and put a horizontal ruler and here I'm gonna put my form. So form, it's gonna have an on submit of, we haven't created yet, we'll say on submit. And you notice here I didn't say um, this dot on submit because this is a functional component, which is one of the advantages of using a functional component. It's less confusing because you don't have to use the this keyword. So here first we're gonna have a div with the class of form group to give it the bootstrap styling. And here we're gonna have our first input. So input, and this will have a type of text. I'm gonna give it the class name form control form control, it's going to have a name, I'm going to call this first name, which we will use to change the value later, and give it a placeholder, we'll say first name, and here we'll, we'll have to give it a value, which will be the um, from our state. And now what's cool about use state is that we don't have to cram everything that we have in our state in one variable. I mean, we could put here um, an array of users and call it users or people, and then put another object that call, uh, we call person, which is the current person we're adding. But we can also, what's cool about hooks, we can use them multiple times. Um, so we can as well here do another um, use another create another state variable. It's called this person, and the method that changes it is uh, called set person. And here we'll say e equals use state and empty object. So now this is our person. This is where we store our person. So here we'll say the value is person dot. Uh, what is this first name? And we'll have an on change, of course, and it will be on change, which we haven't created yet. So on change, and uh, let's close this input. So let's add the other input. So input actually it needs to be in a form group as well. So dot form uh, group, and here let's do input. Uh, it's going to be the same. So I'm just going to copy this here and this is a text form control the name will be last name here as well let's put last it's going to be person dot last name is the value and the on change is generic and will work for both uh, inputs and after this div we're going to put a button with a class name of btn btn success and um, yeah that's it or actually no, the type, we need to give it a type of submit, so we will submit our form. And inside of here we'll say um, add person. All right, now we already have people, so let's add a section where we show these people. So let me see, after this, so we have two divs, so yeah, here we'll put another column, so dot call. And inside of here we wanna show our people, so let's do header to, and say people, and let's put a horizontal, oops, a horizontal ruler here. 
and here we need to loop through our people so let's do an expression so people dot map I'm gonna call this P and for each person we're gonna return a div and inside this div we're gonna have we're just gonna have a, a paragraph that has the first name and last name of that person so P dot first name and then space P dot last name like this and since we're iterating we need to give this a key I'm just gonna use uh, math.random so math.random um, times 10,000 billion billion okay all right uh, now this is gonna not work because we need the on change and on submit so let's create those start with the on change so here um, we'll say const on change because um, in JavaScript you can have uh, functions inside of functions as long as you bind them into constant variables. So here we'll say const on change equals, and it's going to take the event. And here we will uh, actually we will use this. Um, actually, let's put it put it underneath this because it makes more sense. And here we will use the set person uh, function. So here we'll say set person and we will set the um, event dot target dot name. We will set this to the event dot target uh, dot value. Okay, what's wrong here? Oh yeah, it's an object. Okay, now we need the on submit. So on submit also take the event and we will prevent default so event dot prevent uh, default here we will do some basic validation and we will say if uh, we already have uh, these values in person because we've set person we will say if person dot first name so we will check if the first name is empty and let's do dot trim to remove any white space so if this is empty um, or person dot last name dot trim equals an empty string as well. So if this is empty uh, or this is empty, then we just return. Otherwise, now uh, let's create our new person object. So let's say const new person equals let's trim the space. Let's have a first name. And here we say it's person dot first name dot trim and then we'll have the same for last name we can just copy this oops copy this click this control D last name all right so we have this new person now let's add it to our people's array and for this we can use this set people so here let's say set people and here we, we, we need to uh, spread the existing people and then add this new one. So we'll put an array and we use the spread operator to add all the existing ones. We say people and here we say new person. All right, let's save this. Let's make sure we don't have any errors. And by the way, we can remove these props because we're not passing any props to this uh, app component. All right, and if you needed to pass props from here, you, need, you just need to add props back. All right, let's check out our app. All right, so we get John Doe, we get Jane Doe, cool. Uh, so here, let's try to add a new person. Say, um, I don't know, Harry Potter. Say add person. Okay, cannot read property trim of undefined. Is it undefined? Oh, okay, it is it is actually undefined because, um, because we need to initialize it here. Let's, Let's initialize here. Let's give a an initial value of first name of an empty string and here last name of an empty string as well. Let's save. Let's check now. Harry. Oops. Harry. And here we say Potter. Let's try to add this person. Okay, it doesn't work. Again, last name is undefined. Okay, let me, oh, okay, I see where I uh, made a mistake. So yeah, the setter function actually does not merge. Unlike set state where it takes one uh, key and it merges that key, the way uh, this setter from use state is different. It just overwrites whatever is 
existing there. So in this set person here, we need to actually spread the existing person and then add the new key. So here, if we're ed editing, well, the problem that was happening earlier is that we were, whenever we edit first name, we actually just add the first name and make the other one undefined because we remove the other key. We just overwrite the whole object. So this should fix it. All right, so say Harry Potter. All right, cool. It adds the new person. It works fine. And if we try uh, another one, actually we need to add code to reset the form. So here, after we add the person, we can say person uh, because the value of these is stored here in this person. So we can just reset them. We can say person dot first name equals an empty string and then person uh, dot last name equals an empty string. You can outsource this into a function and call it reset form. I'm just gonna do it like this for now. Let's check now, let's say Harry Potter add person. Cool, it adds it and it resets the form. We can as well add Mary Poppins because why not? <laughs> All right, let's add person. Cool, we get the new people. All right, so this is how the use state hook works. You can see we can have multiple uh, state variables stored in different ones with different setters, uh, which makes more sense. We use uh, here like the person, the on change without the this keyword. We don't have to bind stuff in our constructor. constructor. And as you can see, the syntax is just so much cleaner. And you will see later when we uh, use other hooks and use our own custom hooks, it becomes much, much uh, better to maintain React apps. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.